Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with the most important recording projects ever. And today we have this one. This is one that goes with our complete Bach cantata pile. This is the complete Bach works for keyboard with amazing Czech harpsichordist Susanna Ruzichkova or something like that. I think I approximated it reasonably well. What an amazing artist. I don't know if you saw the movie about her life, um, which is extraordinary, or read her biography, which uh, apparently was completed just, uh, well, it was, it, was, it was finished, but then edited just shortly after her death a few years ago. She was an astonishing, astonishing, astonishing artist. A harpsichordist at a time when nobody believed that the harpsichord was a legitimate instrument, and a harpsichordist who played the harpsichord in the Czech Republic, where they really believed the harpsichord was not a legitimate instrument. I mean, there were no harpsichords. And she was a Holocaust survivor, and she was not a member of the Communist Party, and she was Jewish, and she got trashed every single possible way you could be under the Communist regime, and she outlived them all and had the last laugh. But that's not the point. None of that would matter if if these were not extraordinary performances. Our very own Classics Today's Jed Disler reviewed this box when it came out. I reviewed this box when it came out. And it was actually the very, very first project, which is the key in this series of videos, to record the complete Bach solo work, works for solo keyboard on an original instrument. Now, this was not an original box instrument. I mean, they didn't exist back then. Not really, anyway. Um, these were recorded. Let's see here. I mean, you get, uh, let's see, the concertos also, by the way. Um, yes, you get the heart solo harpsichord concertos and some other goodies. And you've got, let's see, Joseph Sook playing the violin and Pierre Fournier on the cello and Jean-Pierre Rampal playing the flute and the Prague soloist with Edward Fisher conducting. And these were recorded. Let me see if I can find out what the dates are. It was like an extraordinary thing that they happened at all because she was not permitted to perform very frequently outside of Czechoslovakia. And her husband, who was the composer Victor Kalabis, um, was not allowed to join her ever because they were afraid that the pair of them would defect. So they were... Oh, I dropped it. Of course I dropped it. Wait a second. So they were only given very limited access to the West, and then only because the money that they earned was turned over to the state. So they were, they were used as, as, you know, slaves, basically, um, to work for the state. And as Ruzichkova, you know, developed a more, a, 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 an international following, she became more valuable, so they let her go more frequently. So let's see, hang on a minute. Um, they were remastered. Yes, they tell us when they were remastered. But do they tell us when they were actually physically recorded? Um, huh. Why would they tell us? It, they do tell us here somewhere. Uh, do, 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 let's see. Um, 1975, around the 1970s, let's say. Let's just leave it at that, because these individual individual discs, I think, will have recording dates. Yes, they do, 1970, somewhere around there. So, so the bottom line was, these were recorded for Erato. Um, the instrument was Ruzicko's own favorite instrument, which was uh, far more, um, let's just say, registrationally endowed instrument than most uh, Baroque players would use today. I love the sound of this instrument because it has timbre, it has color, it does things. You can make interesting sounds with it that keep you listening. But, but none of that would matter if the playing were not extraordinary. And particularly Ruzhichkova's ability to ornament a melodic line and make it sound completely free, um, as if she's making it up on the spot, but have it withstand repetition, you know, in the partitas. Oh my goodness, and the French suites and the English suites, it's just glorious. Her playing of the Goldberg variations is just full of color and verve, and she recorded them several times, actually. There are Superphone recordings, and there's this. Um, we desperately need a complete 
Ruzhitskova edition on Superfun, which probably will never happen. God knows she made a lot of records. She actually eventually had the opportunity to record a tremendous amount of repertoire because she was the only Czech harpsichordist. So being, you know, a big fish in a small pond kind of helps in that sense. Um, she, there's a wonderful story about her playing with the Czech Philharmonic. And they, you know, they, she had very limited opportunities to perform with the Czech Philharmonic because Carol Antrill, the conductor, the principal conductor with whom she was quite friendly, was Jewish. And they said that they would not allow more than one Jew at a time to play with the Czech Philharmonic, um, you know, as a soloist or as a, a name. I mean, it's just unbelievable the, the petty, stupid, insane stuff that she put up with. I mean, you got to read her biography, but it's not because I just have such admiration for her as a human being, which I do. It's just, it's just that the music making here reflects that, that, that the life, the vitality, the humanity, the warmth that characterizes the person and the smoking. Oh, she smoked. She chain smoked. That's how she died. She had, you know, like lung cancer, but she still made it into her well into her eighties, which is like pretty amazing. All things considered, considering what she went through in the concentration camps. I mean, she was in Auschwitz. She, she knew, she knew Dr. Mengele. I mean, you know, it's just an unbelievable story. And then to survive and then to come here triumphantly and do this project, which is on 20 CDs, which Irado, thank God, re-released, uh, is, is amazing. It's an extraordinary legacy and, and a gift. And the music itself, of course, I mean, it's Bach's keyboard music. It's Bach. Uh -huh. I've taken my life trying to come to grips with this stuff. There were always some Bach keyboard pieces that I enjoyed very much. I always loved the two-part inventions because I played some of them and they're not easy <laughs> because you have to have, it's like two hands from two totally separate people. You know, Bach's position on everything was that everybody should be able to play everything every way and it one, what one hand could do, the other hand could do, and what one finger could do, the other finger could do. I mean, down to the microscopic level, right? So, so I mean, it, it's not it's not easy stuff. It's not easy stuff to do at all. But um, I always love that. I always love the well-tempered clavier because I love counterpoint. Oh my goodness, I love fugues, fugal counterpoint particularly. So I mean, there's just there's just a world of things to discover in this music. And since she did it, of course, many other harpsichordists have taken on the Bach keyboard music and have done it extraordinarily well. I mean, was, there's Alan Gilbert and there's Bland, and Blondine Verlet, who I think is amazing. I love her stuff too. That needs to be reissued. And there's, there's, you know, I mean, there's just lots and lots and lots of Bach out there, isn't there? You know, Trevor Pinnock's done some great stuff. There was, of course, you know, before... Before this, you know, Glenn Gould was working his way through Bach on the piano and was just an unbelievable media star. And of course, uh, Ruzhitskova was inspired by Wanda Landowska, whose Bach recordings are historically incredibly significant, but I, she's not in this series because she didn't do a project. I mean, like, I'm going to do all the Bach. Blah, blah. I mean, she did do, like, the well-tempered clavier and all that stuff. So I'm not denying the significance of what she did or the inspiration on others of what she did. In fact, in fact, Ruzhitskova had plans to study with Landowska, but, of course, the government wouldn't let her out, and she couldn't do it, and they wouldn't. It was never going never gonna to work. It was never going to work. But she still managed to do this. <laughs> it is one of the greatest projects ever a triumph of will of artistry of humanity of, of 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 the human spirit it's 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 the victory over adversity it's it's all of those things and the point is that when she plays Bach on the harpsichord it is not this dry mechanical exercise you hear the pulse of a human being behind this music. You hear the humanity, you hear the joy, you hear the, the deep expressivity that, that you can even get into a harpsichord when this lady plays it. And that's a rare thing. So not only is this like the first ever, and it was the first ever complete Bach, you know, keyboard series, it was still and remains one of the greatest uh, and, and a, a, a miracle um, of musical achievement. So keep on listening, friends. Thanks for joining me. Take care.